Scott, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Ms. Could you call the roll, please? Al Glanville. Here. J.R. Huddleston. Here. Deborah Johnston. Here. Bill Lucan. Here. Melissa Nile. Here. Travis Orbach. Here. Larry Kraft. Here. Linda Barbell. Here. Thank you. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Allegiance to the, the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, as always, Council, if you have a conflict of interest, please let the rest of the Council know before you vote. Uh, and we don't have microphones tonight, so for everyone else's benefit, the folks in the public, uh, if you could speak up, I'll make sure that everyone can hear you. I'm going to get a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. The motion passes. I'm sorry, was there an opposition? Travis. <laughs> um, a motion to approve, can I get a motion to approve the minutes from the March 18th meeting? I make a motion to approve the minutes from the March 18th council meeting. Note the date change for the free dump weeks. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. So I want to say something. Um, I was looking at the. Do we approve the minutes from last week? The agenda or last week? Yeah. Just now. Just now. Just now. No. That's what I meant. So I, I got to prep myself. I apologize if you'll allow me. So I, I, I don't oppose the uh, motion to approve the agenda. It's the minutes from last week. Then. Okay. Sorry. I apologize. Sense. We'll repeat, please. <clears throat> so the the agenda, I do I do uh, approve that. The, the, the minutes from last week. That's that's what I meant to. I'm not, sorry. All right. Okay. Apologies. Misty. Sorry. Misty. Exchange I had, though my comments weren't recorded anywhere. It was just, that was just going on. Alright, can I get a motion to approve the bills in between? <coughs> can I make a motion to approve the bills in between for $103,818.92? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the current claims? I make a motion to approve the current claims of $59,448.45. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Uh, and uh, a motion to approve the uh, Wells Fargo credit card claims. Make a motion to approve Wells Fargo credit card claims for $6,522.60. Second. Second. <laughs> Thank you. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Communications from the public. Do we have anybody that would like to address the council tonight? All right. We have a public hearing at 710. Uh, we're about five minutes away from that. Uh, so, Tracy, uh, let's go ahead and move on to uh, council updates. Okay. 
Okay, from our city engineer, and when we get to 710, I'll just ask you to take a pause. Okay. So that we'll go to the public hearing, and then we'll come back to you. All right. Uh, well, our update for the regroup of uh, the month of March. Uh, a lot of progress, uh, really. Uh, bigger crews. Um, there have been some days that it's uh, r almost rather amazing to see how many people they have on the job. And I think that bodes well for uh, the rest of the season, the rest of the construction year. Uh, my personal feeling of how the project is going is uh, improving uh, as far as the timeline that uh, we may we may see it uh, you know, come to conclusion um, closer to the schedule that they now propose. So can't promise, but that's my observation. <coughs> it's looking good. Um, so on the utility side of things, um, a lot of progress on uh, water and sewer on North River Street uh, between uh, National Avenue and the intersection of Main Street, which is you know behind the buildings there. Uh, and the north entrance to the VA. So tomorrow, I believe, <coughs> excuse me, uh, picked up an itch. Um, tomorrow we will probably see a second set of signals go in place. So uh, plan your commute accordingly. Um, this will be to take care of some one lane traffic that's going to be needed in the vicinity of that uh, North River Street entrance to the VA uh, as they cross through that area with water main installation. They did not tell for sure how long the second set of signals will be in place. They'll try to coordinate them so that you know it flows through, but we'll see. So anyway, that's a heads up. Uh, like I say, find your commute to the north side of town or vice versa uh, accordingly. Uh, as, as you've been able to see, we do have four of the towers of the suspended sidewalk system that have been brought to, um, to town and have been put up. Um, what we do not know yet is how many more are actually already <coughs> fabricated and ready. But this is a good sign, I mean, it's at least we can see uh, to some extent what, you know, what the sidewalk is going to look like. And they've been working on it. Uh, they were working on it today. I think they're learning. I think the crew is probably learning how to, you know, how it all really fits together. And probably as they keep going, they will really have it down to a, uh, uh, a really, you know, uh, they'll be more established in how to do it. So, uh, but it's looking good to see that going up. Um, also, uh, concrete work has. Uh, been going on. You've noticed uh, most of the corners uh, in the south part of town are uh, finished, and it's really just backfill that remains to be done. So from the university uh, intersection south, uh, there's really not a whole lot of uh, concrete work left to do. Uh, there's a little bit um, at the Glass Pro business location. There's quite a bit of work there, and there's some underground tanks that have to be removed. So that's been something that's been uh, <clears throat> delayed for a while to be the optimum time for them to take those out. And, uh, but uh, probably more concrete will be going down uh, tomorrow or Thursday on North River Street. They were forming that today and then they're preparing and, and they're trimming and packing uh, even north of National Avenue. So that's good progress in that, in that regard. Um, other than that, I think for the road project, that's pretty much where we're at. Uh, I can take a break for a minute. I need to do that here. No, we're we're thirty seconds. Away. We're thirty seconds. Away. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll, I'll take any questions after the hearing if, 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 if there are any. Okay. Uh, one quick question that can squeeze in. You had mentioned that uh, it looks like you're back on schedule for a completion date. Uh, can you <coughs> remind us again what that? Uh, December days. of this year. Okay. It looks more hopeful now, <clears throat> just judging by the rate of progress that they've been making. All right. All right. We're
our 710 public hearing. Uh, this is a public hearing to act on the application for a special sale alcoholic beverage license from a, from a mammoth site uh, for the Mammoth Days Dance event to be held on June 22nd, 2024 at the Mammoth site, 1800 <coughs> Highway 18. Is anyone here from the Mammoth site to speak to that? Uh, is there anyone in the public that has any questions about it? Anyone on council that has any questions? All right, well, let's round up and close the public hearing at 7 11. Motion from council to either approve, deny, or postpone the application for a special, special alcoholic beverage license. I make a motion <coughs> to approve the application for a special sale alcoholic beverage license from the Mammoth site for the Mammoth Days Dance event to be held on June 22, 2024, at the Mammoth Site 1800 Highway 18 bypass. Second. Discussion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> the motion passes. All right. Dr. Richards. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so on other projects of interest, uh, the golf course uh, clubhouse retaining wall appears to be at full height, or very, very close to it. I think it is at full height. Uh, it's very impressive looking. It's, when you see the size of it, you realize it really is a very significant project. It should really help, it should solve the stability problems um, and the erosion problems that we've had uh, since the building was built. So when you have a chance, drive through the golf course, uh, take a look at uh, that project, which is very much well along now. So that's good to see. And other than that, um, I think we're airport hangar. The new hangar is um, electrical work. My understanding is, is finished or very near finished. So that project is now moving to the um, uh, paving of the taxiways and connecting aprons. And we just got those uh, plans for that today. So that's, uh, that's my update. So any questions uh, on anything? Tracy, is, it, it looks like, and I think you said the water line and sewer has been completed all the way up past Flatiron. Yeah, they're right. <coughs> they're right to that area. They have the sewer to that manhole that's actually behind the curb, across from the Flatiron on the north side of the VA entrance road, and they're coming through there right now with the water. So that's um, yeah, that whole section. For utilities, it's pretty much done. So the only done. water line we have left to replace is from when the VA road comes down up to Battle Mountain. Actually, up to Battle Mountain, and then there's also water line on uh, Battle Mountain itself. Oh, so yeah. So we have both water and sewer up to the Battle Mountain intersection, and then we only have water going uh, east. Sewers. So is, uh, doesn't have to be replaced up in that area. But there by the courthouse and all of that, yes, that's both water and sewer. And, you know, that was part of, we're now in the section that was the 1,900 additional feet that we added uh, shortly after the project was let because we had that water main break north of the courthouse uh, due to the rocks. And, yes, it has, it has proven itself with what we've seen in the excavation that that's a very rocky area through there. So that water main that was put in in 1980 was definitely buried in rocks. So we would have undoubtedly had more breaks um, if we had not changed that out. So that was a good, good move. What's the condition or how old is the water line going up Battle Mountain? Uh, it's older. Some of it's transite, so it's probably about 70 years old. So that's being replaced. Okay, but the sewer isn't? Nope, it's PVC. And it's, it's, yeah, and the sewer route is different 
in that area anyway. So okay. it, yeah, it's not the same. It doesn't, doesn't follow the same route as water. Well, we same thing. <laughs> no, but it, it's not going to be an issue of being too aged no. under the road. No, and PVC sewer mains, if they were buried in rock, they're, they've never caused a problem because they're not under pressure. It's the water that's under pressure and it vibrates very, very small, very minute, but 40 years of vibration against a rock and it, it just it'll make a crack and then it splits. <clears throat> Tracy, I'd like to make an observation on everything that's going on. Um, I, get, I get the opportunity several times a day to travel those stoplights. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I honestly would like to make a very passionate plea to the general public to be reminded that these individuals are working hard. They want to go home at night to their families or their family members. Speeding through there, getting frustrated, um, running the red lights. I had a lady yesterday um, was coming, I was going this way <clears throat> back into town. She was coming up that road and we met. She wanted me to back up. I didn't want to back up because I didn't have to. Mm -hmm. But I did help her. She was a little bit lost. She turned around. She got turned. She got to where she was going. But <clears throat> there's people have argued. They've hollered at each other. You know. Let's just kind of be civil about this, you know, because it's 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 a reality. It's frustrating. I I've got I'm, I'm timed on my bus to get from point A to point B, but getting mad about it is not going to solve the problem. So I just like to put that out there, and hopefully that our, our town can you know you know behave accordingly. Hopefully, <laughs> thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. So I um, noticed um, some social media complaining about uh, apparently the area's gotten quite filled with potholes. <coughs> and it's quite a rough ride. The moisture over the weekend was ferocious. And they were actually out there on Easter morning uh, working on it. So mm -hmm. they have tried. It holds up for about two hours after they go through it. Mm -hmm. And literally, mm -hmm. yeah. As it dries up, it's much easier to take care of it. The, the rain or snow, it's just amazing <laughs> how quickly it, it becomes really bad. Yeah, and I have had the experience too of having someone coming at me who obviously came through the red light and at least they did back up because I had eight cars behind me, so they probably thought eight versus one. But I don't know. <laughs> I can relate. I had one come at me. I was going north. And I had the green light, of course, and I'm just starting around that little bit of a corner before you get to Minicata. Here she is, and she's heading south, and I'm like, I, I, so I pull over as far as I can, and she's just taking out cones as she heads <coughs> on <coughs> south. You know, like, yep. Well, um. I can speak to that. Those guys on Sunday, there were four people out there, one guy in a bobcat, early Sunday morning, working up until probably 10 or 11 o'clock, filling in, in potholes and everything. And today they started with the grader, and repeatedly going back and forth down that road getting rid of the potholes. So they're making every effort they can. They really are. Not that I drive that road. I mean, using that grader and grading the road continuously all day long, I mean, you're just adding water to dirt, water to dirt, you're, you're creating bricks. It's, you know, I mean, they're making the effort. I applaud them for that. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions for the Thank you, Tracy. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Up next are personnel actions. I'd like to break them up into uh, two motions. Uh, as you can see, looking at the agenda. <coughs> Items A through E are more traditional hires, uh, and then F through yeah. W uh, are the returning part-time wage increase employees. So if I could get a motion to approve personnel actions A through E. I would like to make a motion to approve personnel actions A through E. Second. Second. Discussion? All in 
favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, and our second uh, group of personal actions is for the returning first time we increase uh, employees. We have a motion to approve personal actions F through W. We would like to make a motion to approve personal actions F through W. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Uh, on to our ordinances. Uh, first one uh, is a uh, motion to approve second reading of Ordinance 1256. Make a motion to approve the second reading of Ordinance 1256, an ordinance revising Title, title IX general, general Regulations, Chapter 92, Parks Recreation, 92.17, Animals Restricted. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kay, would you call the roll, please? Travis Orbeck? Yes. Larry Pratt? Yes. Bill Lucan? Yes. Melissa Nile? Yes. Al Glanville? Yes. J.R. Huddleston? Yes. Deborah Johnston? Yes. Linda Barbell? Yes. Thank you. The motion passes. On our second ordinance, uh, ordinance item B, uh, motion to approve the first reading of ordinance 1257. Make a motion to approve the first reading of Ordinance 1257 to revise Title 7, Traffic Code, Chapter 72, Wayfinding, 72.01, Definitions. Second. Discussion? So, um, in your package you'll see that there's uh, some definitions for city wayfinding signs, the MUTCD, the wayfinding plan on the private side. When uh, council first approved this, uh, those definitions weren't in that ordinance. And when Misty sent everything off to American Legal and they were taking a look at getting uh, it added, they had noticed that the, the definitions weren't there. So that's what you're doing tonight, is adding the definitions uh, that uh, we didn't get included first time around. Any other questions? Misty, would you call the roll, please? Melissa Nile. Yes. Linda Barbell? Yes. Deborah Johnston? Yes. J.R. Huddleston? Yes. Al Glanville? Yes. Bill Lucan? Yes. Travis Orbeck? Yes. Larry Pratt? Yes. Al, did I get help? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, so the motion of first reading of ordinance 1257 passes. On to our uh, resolution. Uh, resolution. I get a motion to approve resolution 2024-9, a resolution to surplus city property. I make a motion to approve resolution 2024-9, a resolution to surplus city property, Parks Department, 2019 JD 1550 Mower. Second. Discussion? Uh, so if you'll notice uh, in the the resolution is not only to surplus the item, uh, but to uh, trade it in on the purchase of a new 2022 JD 1550 terrain cut mower. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. On to our new business, new business item A. We get a motion to allow to the Division of Criminal Investigation access to City of Hot Springs controlled property. I make a motion to allow the South Dakota Division of Criminal Investigation, DCI, access to the City of Hot Springs controlled property for the installation of a license plate reader LPR camera, which is part of the overall statewide LPR system under the full control and policy management and purposes of the South Dakota DCI. Second. Discussion? So this was first brought in front of council uh, at the last council meeting as part of the public safety's uh, report. Travis had some questions uh, about it, uh, and there were some other council members that also had some questions. Uh, so it was brought back as an agenda item. 
it's my understanding that uh, whole council has had an opportunity uh, to speak with uh, Preston with PCI and get any questions answered that you might have had. So with that, anybody have any, still have any concerns, any questions, any comments? Yeah, I'll, I'll make one. So this, the way I read it, it, it says that we're allowing BCI to have, the last sentence there, under the full control of policy management purposes of the South Dakota Department of Criminal, Criminal Investigation. So it's under their rules and their policies that this will be in place? Yes. Okay, so we won't have a chance to review anything? No memorandum of understanding or any policies for the council to look at? Not that I'm aware of, Bill, do you have any? No, like to all we're doing is providing them a piece of real estate to install a piece of equipment. It's their system, not ours. But our officers will have access no. for the use of it? No. They won't be able to input no. license plates that we're looking if, for? If our officers have a crime committed, they can send that license plate, if they know it, to DCI, and DCI will enter it into their system. Okay. It's, it's no different than any other crime database currently in use. But we do not have access to enter any information into their system. It is, that's why it's under their full control. So I'll hold on that. Just, like the ordinance had to have definitions on it. Is there, like do we define crime? Like is there definitions of what they consider a crime? Like is it limited to a certain scope or is it broad? You know what I mean? See, this is under their policies and rules, so we don't really know. I, I think in a way that the local uh, law enforcement officers do follow state statute and, and crime laws. And I would think that with the training and the tools that we have voted to provide for our local law enforcement officers to better enable them to work with different agencies, whether they're county or state, um, is to our benefit. And so I think you have different groups that are working together hand in hand, whether they're state, game, fish, and parks, county, or state. Well, a, a, a crime isn't at, the def, isn't at the discretion of a local law enforcement officer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a violation of either South Dakota codified law or a a, uh, a federal statute. So that's a, a violation of that is a crime. And so it's not up at the, at the officer's discretion. So they, they don't define what a crime is. So, if it's up to, so let's say somebody's speeding. Well, you consider that a crime? Yes. Be yeah, that, speeding is a crime. Okay, so we're looking at anything from speeding to Amber Alerts, anything? Speeding. These are not speed cameras, so that's not, that wouldn't even be, we, we looked at this type of technology to try to say, hey, can we write speeding tickets, but this, that isn't what this technology is about. And Amber Alert is because a kidnapped child where they know the license plate of the abducted child gets entered into the system, if that vehicle goes by a camera, then the system knows that that vehicle passed whatever location that was, an alert is sent out to whatever agency. That's where the value of this is. If that vehicle that has not been flagged as a crime goes by at 100 miles an hour and there's no crime associated with that, it doesn't pass the so what test because there's no radar speed. This is not a speed camera. This is not a facial recognition camera. This is not a registered owner recognition camera. This is not a 
stop sign violation camera. This is simply a license plate reading camera. So if I won't point to anybody else. If my vehicle has been involved in a crime and it's been entered in the system and it goes past that camera, it will be flagged. If my vehicle has not been involved in a system and it drives past the camera, the camera says, there went Bill. So what? After a designated period of time, that data drops out. But if my car gets stolen and it drives past a camera and that and I've reported my car stolen, then a flag goes up and says Bill's car was at this location. That's all it is. It's not like say I I originally started going down this road to try to write speeding tickets, but that is, that ain't on the board. Can't do it in South Dakota. Right, no, I, I appreciate that. But yeah. you, you listed off a bunch of different things. It would just be nice, in my opinion, to have that in writing from the SDPCI. And it's, you know, I, I think Preston had a conversation with you face to face. Again, it's their system to address crimes, and we are providing them about that much real estate uh, to help them do that. So for our attorneys, because we're talking about crimes, is there any explanation or guidance you can give us that would speak to Travis's concern about why somebody's license plate might be in the DCI database that uh, they're looking to track. You know, an Amber Alert, or if somebody has somebody been convicted of a crime in a court of law, uh, and that's why, depending on what the crime is, that it would end up in DCI's database. Is there anything you can help us with there? Help Travis with? Uh, you know, when he talks about speeding, uh, because these don't have radar on, they're not going to know if anybody's going by them at 50 miles an hour, 5 miles an hour, whatever, so that isn't going to be, that license plate isn't going to be flagged. Um, but if that license plate happens to be in DCI's database because of a crime, then they would be notified that that vehicle passed this location at this point in time. Is there anything you can help us with there? Well, it probably won't be <clears throat> flagged because a crime has been committed. They just have probable cause that one has been committed with that vehicle. Uh, it, 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 it hasn't been that because there's a conviction. Or probable cause, or well, they're building their case for probable cause. <coughs> They've seen a vehicle go in and out on a certain road, and they might be suspected of carrying drugs. We don't know. I mean, I doubt we'd ever know. Yeah, we're not getting those if they've got a picture, they've got video, okay, my kid's walking down the street. They've got a video on the school and somebody pulls up and grabs my kid and they've got a clear plate check on it. That's what they're talking about. Simple as that. If you're speeding down the street or you're doing drug activity and you haven't been convicted of it yet, it's not going to go into the database. It's not going to happen <clears throat> unless you get pulled over and even then you still have to go to court, right? So it's still not going to show up on their DCI's thing, but it talk, But what I'm talking about is Amber Alerts. I'm talking about <clears throat> if they um, somebody drives up and shoots somebody in the head, they've got a picture of it. They've got a, a clear definition of what the tag number is on the vehicle, a description of it. This is what it's talking about. Am I correct in assuming that? That would make this. That would make 100% sense, right? 
And all we're doing is giving them, like Bill says, a piece of dirt, to put their sign down so that our community can be a heck of a lot safer. What was it? Not, it wasn't too long ago. They had one where he shot out of rapid. He's coming down the freeway. He came into town. He, he zipped through there. They had to do radios. If they had had something like this in Rapid City, they might have had a better chance of getting to him before he got to Rapid to Hot Springs and the things that transpired after that. That's all we're doing. That's just my that's my comment on it. And it, it might help to better define what the what the issue is. I, I think the issue before the council is privacy, right? Is that essentially what the issue is the expectation of privacy? Regarding I mean, we've heard from a couple of council members they've list they've made a list of this right here my privacy is given up right there i mean they've made a list of things but we haven't seen an actual list from the people who are actually putting the camera that's all i'm asking it would be nice to see a list i mean did you ask him for one when you had a one-on-one -on -one? they said that they do memorandum memorandum of understandings with usually with police if you can do it with the police why can't you do it with the council and did you ask them that question? Also, private businesses can have these installed, right? No. So, no. no. Yeah. No. That's what it says. Preston said that. Yeah. The private business could do this just as well as we could. And now you've got to have an MOA with the, with the private business. You've got to have an agreement or something with, with, you know, to, to get this thing going. They, Preston just said they haven't been able to find any local businesses yet to do it. So we're technically, I mean, we could have these license plate readers anywhere. If, if a private business wanted to partner with the DCI, they could do it. It's just that we're giving up our real estate, right? Which I, which, and I appreciate, which is why I thought we should vote on it. So, I mean, as far as the, the other matters, I mean, that's all personal for us. But, but yeah, so these things could be installed anywhere. But if there's an MOA that's going to go to a private owner of the property, why can't we see an MOA? You know, if it's going to go to the police department, why not us? That's, that's my question. You know? If you don't see anything in writing, we can assume, make assumptions, but if we don't see it in writing, I mean, there's always the possibility when you, you know you you give up your freedoms when you you know for security, right? You know what if what if someone gets falsely accused of beating their wife or beating their husband or whatever, and they take off? You know, license plate reader catches them, boom, right there. You know, there's a false accusation. Like you 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 drag you catch everybody in this thing. You know, so along with the good, there's the bad too. So as we guys have to weigh those. There's got to be probable cause for that type of stuff. Hello, please. Yeah, this happened. So I met with DCI also. Um, my concern was um, oversight. What is going to do? We have control if we get, you know, I, I totally trust the Hot Springs Police Department. What if somewhere along the line we get a, a bad officer that's like stalking his, his wife? How do we know that he's not using it? And so Preston did explain he he is there's a there's a group of ten that have access to it. He has oversight and he does audits constantly. At least once a month, he goes through an audit. Who, who ran through the information? Um, our officers would be able to enter. When they enter the plate number, they also have to enter the case number and follow that up. So there is oversight and there is control. There are places in Rapid, private companies that do have license plate readers. He gave us a couple examples, but their understand their memorandum of understanding is they offer their materials to the cops, but the cops don't give them anything back. So if someone comes into their place of business, they shoot it up, they allow the cops to read their, their readers, but that's as far as it goes. So it's a one-way memorandum of understanding. talked about last time, uh, and I talked with Bill about it a little bit. Bill, could, uh, do you have the what the system is, what it's not, uh, and the other thing that uh, I think we touched on just a little bit uh, is if a car is identified uh, in the DCI system, uh, at what point that vehicle would be stopped in, in that process? Yeah. <coughs> uh, 
I'll, and I'll address that first. Most likely, if a vehicle of interest was identified at the camera installed in Hot Springs, and the agency of interest was notified, that stop would more than likely not happen within the city limits of Hot Springs. <coughs> Number one, law enforcement doesn't want stops that may be high risk stops to happen inside the city limits. They're going to make their plan and they're going to do it out in a rural area. They're going to probably wait till it's out on 79 or out on 18 to where they can set up and do their stop. So the, the chances of a, something going down inside Hot Springs city limits based on uh, something that a camera inside Hot Springs saw is very, very low. Um, to summarize again what the camera is and what it isn't, uh, it's technology to assist law enforcement in ongoing and active criminal investigations. It's, the tool is aimed to address violent crimes and felonies to include murders, kidnapping, human trafficking, drug trafficking, Amber Alert child abductions, stolen vehicles, and other crimes. It is designed to recognize license plates only. They do not identify speeding violations, stop sign violations, nor is it used for facial recognition. It does not identify registered owners of vehicles. And again, the access to this technology is controlled by strong policies and procedures under the control of uh, South Dakota uh, Department of Criminal Investigation. And that is who can use it, the record retention period, and how the data is shared. You know, one other thing I was thinking about, if, if this, if we, our camera catches a crime and it leads to a court case, can we get a piece of those fees? Probably not. No. I would take out the probably. <laughs> <laughs> I modified my answer uh, based on Misty's uh, coaching. All right. Does council have any more questions about this particular agenda? And I want to say that I raised my voice because I've been accused of having a soft voice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. I'm not saying. Uh, so is everyone clear that uh, the motion in front of you is to allow the South Dakota Division of Criminal Investigation, DCI, access to City of Hot Springs controlled property for the installation of a license plate for leader of the county? Yes. 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 All right. Misty, would you call the roll, please? J.R. Huddleston? Yes. Deborah Johnston? Yes. Bill Lucan? Yes. Travis Orbach? No. Larry Pratt? Yes. Linda Barbell? Yes. Melissa Niles? Yes. Paul Glanville? Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, the motion passes. I'd like to thank everybody uh, for having uh, a robust discussion on this. Uh, and I respect the stance that Travis has taken and the questions that he has. It's tough to be uh, a lone dissenting vote. Uh, so Thank you. Thank you for holding your ground. And if I can add something, I appreciate Travis bringing it up last meeting. Uh, I probably got, I probably nothing. I got overly enthusiastic, jumped the gun, and I apologize to the council for pushing something through when I shouldn't have it. Something this important did need to come to a vote. Uh, Travis challenged the challenged me, and I appreciate that. And without sounding too lofty, this is what an elected government, how an elected government ought to act. We talked about it. 
we got informed and we voted on it. So now we're gonna go have a duel. I was busy that time, but yeah, thanks. <laughs> anyway, I think we did it right. Thanks for voting. All right. On to new business item B. Uh, I got a motion to approve installation of two sixty thousand BTU propane heaters in the Mueller Civic Center gymnasium. Make a motion to approve two sixty <coughs> K BTU propane heaters in the Mueller Civic Center gymnasium at a total estimated expense of up to twenty-five thousand, including propane and lines, to be funded by future contingency transfer. Second. Discussion. Bob, well, Misty, is there anything that you're able to add on? I know that, he did, that Chris did his research on getting an appropriate solution. I would add that this would be your third um, contingency transfer so far this year, and there's still roughly 42,000 remaining. How much? 42,000, if you approve this up to 25. And Chris had come to uh, admin finance with this presentation. And we discussed it and uh, recommend it forward. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. No business item C. Uh, I get a motion to approve revisions to the city CDL certification and repayment policy. Make a motion to approve the revisions to the city CDL certification repayment policy. City to pay for the cost of the courts and wages for time spent in, in the classroom only in exchange for a two-year employment commitment. Second. Discussion? This also was brought to admin finance. Uh, we discussed it and recommended it forward. So what happens if uh, they just walk after they got their CDL? They pay back. Like, pay if back. it's within two years. No, I'm saying, I'm saying, yeah. If they stay two years, then nothing happens if they leave after that. They have to stay for two years. No, but what, if they they not, what if they, they decide not to stay for two years and we take their last paycheck? Yeah, it, they have, it, the cost of the class will most likely be more than their last right. paycheck. And we are required to pay them at least minimum wage for the hours that they work. So any deductions we could take from the last paycheck, we would but then they'd be required to pay us back in monthly installments of at least $200 with no interest unless they're late. Um, that's what the policy says. And how would that be enforced? Well, we, if they don't pay, we get we send them to collection or we get a small claims judgment. We've done it before. So they've still got a CDL. How does that get reported? I'm just yeah, pointing the, out the, the CDL out the belongs to the, the person who got it. Right. So you're right. They still right. get it. We can't report to anybody to have it taken away. Nope, I'm just pointing out the obvious. Yeah. Thank you. Questions? Any other questions? I'm not trying to create dissension, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm just pointing out the obvious. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> the motion passes. New business item D. Uh, I get a motion to renew the following 2024 through 2025 malt beverage licenses. Okay. <laughs> to make a motion to renew the following 2024-2025 malt beverage licenses, American Legion Post 71, Big Bats LLC, Big Time Pizza, Black Hills Pizza Hut, CS Inc. doing business as Winter Circle, Dakota Mart Inc. doing business as Dakota Mart Convenience, Dollar Gen Midwest LLC doing business as Dollar General Store number 181. Family Dollar Stores of South Dakota LLC number 27126. Frog Projects LLC doing business as The Space. Good Karma Couture LLC doing business as Morning Sunshine. HSP Loft Properties, LLC, MG Oil Company, doing business has, has Corner Pantry, number 11A and 11B, 
Misty River Tavern, LLC, Moccasin Springs, LLC, doing business as the Dragonfly, Southern Hills Golf Course, Southern Hills Mercantile, LLC, Springs Hotel, LLC, doing business as Springs Coffee Kiosk, Springs Steakhouse, Stanwell, LLC, doing business as Art House. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> the motion passes. New business item E. We get a motion to approve a travel training request for police officer Matthew Maxfield. I'll make a motion to approve a travel training request for police officer Matthew Maxwell to attend basic crime scene operations course in Sturgis, South Dakota on April 22nd to April 23rd. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. New business item F. Uh, can I get a motion for a travel training request for Police Captain Philip Shively, Officer Lexi Joe Denneke, Officer Matthew Maxfield, Officer Kenneth Ayers, and Officer Sherelle Hughes. Make a motion to approve travel training requests for Captain Philip Shively, Officer Lexi Joe Denneke, Officer Matthew Maxfield, and Officer Kenneth Ayers, and Officer Sherelle Hughes to attend the Craig Douglas Edged Weapon Overview Course to be held on July 24th in Hot Springs, South Dakota. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> the motion passes. The business item G. Uh, can I get a motion for a travel training request for Police Captain Philip Shively? I make a motion to approve the request for Captain Police Captain Philip Shively to attend vehicle close quarter battle training to be held in Sioux Falls, South Dakota on 915 through 918. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Uh, and our last new business item H. Uh, can I get a motion for a travel training request for development coordinator Scott Sobey? Make a motion to approve travel training request for development coordinator Scott Sobey to attend the SDML International Code Council training in Rapid City on 4-9. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Bring this to our committee reports. So the first one, Administrative and Finance, JR. The next admin finance meeting will be April 8th at 1 p.m. here in the Mueller Civic Center. Thank you. Airport Advisory, Bill. Airport Advisory will meet this Thursday, April 4th, 8.30 at the airport. Thank you. Custer Fall River Regional Waste Management, Travis. The Custer Fall River Regional Waste Management District Board meeting will next meet on Thursday, May 9th at 7 p.m. at the South Annex Building. Thank you. Historic Preservation, Deborah? Uh, they meet tomorrow, April 3rd, 5 p.m. here at the Miller Center. Thank you. Evans Flood Advisory, Linda? Um, they will meet on April 11th at noon at the Evans Pledge. Thank you. Parks Recreation Beautification, Larry, Linda. <coughs> Next meeting will take place tomorrow at 2 p.m. here at the Mueller Center, Wednesday, April the 3rd. Thank you. Yes, sir. Planning and Zoning, Deborah. Planning and Zoning met March 20th, 6 p.m. at City Hall. President were Don Olstead, James Forbord, Wayne Hageman, Christine Heidebrink. Staff was Scott. Sogi and myself. Guests present were Jason Getch and Ivy Getch, Todd and Vicki Moore. Mauer. Uh, new, under new business, um, Milbrandt Alley vacate. The commission needs to see the access to the adjacent property 202A-B defined on the drawing. The required survey needs to be identified 
needs to identify the actual points of the property on the GIS map shows the driveway crosses lot 11 as well as lot 12. And an alternate plan would be to create an access easement to confine the per, uh, confirm the permanent access to lot 202A and B. Uh, so, um, this is the old dew drop in and the historic log cabin. They want to vacate uh, the street in between them that's right at the base of the hill that goes up to the motel. And the corner of the lower property is like crosses that road. So they want to get that uh, cleared up so that the road either has an easement or the property line goes in um, so that the road isn't crossing someone else's property. It's just one of those things that's never been cleared up since town was put together. Will that be vacating just a portion of that road that's not used or the entire thing? It'll go, it, it'll be partial. So we'll be leaving a piece of unaccessible road on? There will be utility easements. Or what do you mean Is it, Doesn't the road go all the way back through that valley uh, between other people's properties? Mm -hmm. And are we only talking about vacating a portion of it? Just and it's portion. not even a road, so I no, don't need to call it a road. There's, but a, there's a flat of a road. Well, the way there's no road are set up, <coughs> this road goes here, this is down here. I, I know what right. it is. And right. I think <coughs> that what we're talking about doing, if it's straight, is taking a piece and vacating it, but leaving a piece unvacated right. that probably sh either should be considered or it's, it's other property owners are affected by that and they didn't want to vacate so there's just this one straight section from the road going up to the historic log cabin to just the back of Lucy's or the dew drop going to be Lacey's now. <laughs> Keep it straight. And um, so that they can build a, uh, have proper setbacks when they want to build a garage back there. And, but there will be utility easements maintained. So it's just getting the plats squared away and proper surveys. And then number two was the Getch lot line revision. There was conversation about the subdivision ordinance, which defines a minor subdivision up to three lots and a major subdivision as four or more lots. This is a minor subdivision. The utilities and the city streets <coughs> are already in place. The motion to approve was by Christine and seconded by James. And, um, the approval by the P and Z recommended re recommended for the city to on the next to go to the next city council for their review and I am not remembering where this is so um, we will be seeing this coming forward um, in the future the Mower Mower 1717 Wilson car port setback. There was conversation about the small lots in town and the changes in the needs of the residents regarding land setback restrictions. The adjacent properties out buildings are close to the alley for similar reasons. Uh, so the commission approved for the rear property setback to meet the precedent set by the neighboring properties. So this is up on Wilson Avenue and um, there's multiple garages that go right to the edge of the alley and so um, and we've approved that on other situations where they don't the site line is not beyond what's already set in place along that block so um, we're just going with what's already been set previously um, tiny homes other community regulations report. The discussion was based on different approaches to the city water service and how 
the second meter is involved with the second residence on the property, such as a tiny home. Setbacks were discussed as well as the effect of a second residence on a property in the neighborhood. That's kind of an ongoing discussion. Um, I presented a newspaper article to Scott for review that discusses the impact of short-term rentals in other Black Hills cities. Uh, Custer, Hill City, and Deadwood have passed ordinances banning new short-term rentals in areas zoned residential. So we're talking Airbnbs, VBROs. Um, the planning and zoning meeting um, should we change from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Daylight savings time uh, was not discussed. Um, under old business, alley excavation site work, what were the past guidelines for developing previous alleys in the city? Don said that most of the alleys have simply been bladed and gravel placed for the final surface. Don also stated that Scott is enforcing the paved parking rule with new construction, but he is challenged by the comparison of the development on North 26th Street as the city did not install curb and gutter and pavement, but simply laid millings for the roads. Um, this is up behind the state vet's home. Uh, there was discussion about the lack of a city sewer on North 26th Street also. There are all, these are all in our subdivision requirements for developing. The conversation then went to the area known as the Goddard Edition on South 23rd Street. That's across the bypass from the trailer house is up on 23rd. But, um, it's kind of a wild land back over there. Um, the lots are listed for sale and are affordable, but with installing the required sewer, water, and road work, no one can afford to do the developing required. The meeting adjourned at 7.25 p.m., and the next one will be April 17th at 6 p.m. City Hall. Any questions for Deborah? Yeah, Deborah. <coughs> talked about the building, um, about looking up the alley by Wilson. Um, is that going to set a precedence in the town? I've noticed that when I do drive around, I see a lot of that up over by my house. My neighbor's got probably that much into the, from her building into the street. And I was talking to Billy. I said, well, I want to put up a fence in my backyard. Do I take it off hers? Do I do six foot? What do I do? And he said, just take a line of sight. I'm like, well. Well, you go talk to Scott, <laughs> number one. <laughs> And you need to keep it within your own property lines, even though some of these old... Well, the reason why I want to do it is to keep people from parking on my property. You know, I mean, that's a bad thing that people do also in town. Anything new really need well, you need to keep it on your property. No, I'm not, I'm not going into the street. What I'm saying is my property line goes into the alley. Here's the alley. My neighbor's house is here. There's that much space from her back of her building to the alley. Okay. Right. So, and I'm asking you, or passing the question on, is that going to set a precedent? Can we all start doing that? See Scott. It's see Scott because each one of those is taken separately, okay. and each situation is yeah. dealt with. Because you have some some areas that are grandfathered in where maybe their garage is right on the property line yeah. and you, then you have somebody across the alley, oh, I want to build this and it's going to be right there on the property line. Well, that's new construction and it needs to, to have a setback. Hopefully, yes. Yeah. So, so by allowing them not to have the proper setback like everybody else has for new construction, I think that's what Larry's question was. Are we setting yeah. a precedent not to ignore ordinances? I know we up on, further up Thank on Wilson, <laughs> we had uh, a small property that wanted a carport. And I mean, her space was so limited. It's just like a postage stamp sized lot. And um, so they allowed her to go with line of sight, not to go beyond line of sight of all the other uh, garages that were along that street 
but yet her neighbor was going to take an old dilapidated garage out and put in a new one and he had to go with the setbacks because it was new construction. Oh. And he had the room. Because well, I got four city lots, so. You have the room. I have the room, okay. <laughs> Any other questions for Deborah? Thank you, Deborah. Yeah. Well, she was talking about the, the Gedge property uh, that uh, was originally on tonight's agenda. Uh, and as the discussion uh, evolved with that, uh, there are still some issues that need to be addressed. And we felt this wasn't ready to, uh, to be in front of you folks tonight. Oh, okay. so there are more conversations that need to happen with that. Uh, and uh, Don Olstead with, with planning and zoning has been part of those conversations. We'll get the right thing in front of you. Thank you. Public safety, Bill, JR. Public safety will meet this Thursday, April 4th, 2 p.m. at the Mueller Center Conference Room. Thank you. Public works, Bill, Bill. Hello. Public works last met on March 26th at 1 p.m. here at the Mueller Center. Members present were myself, Bill Lukens, Melissa Niles, Mayor Bob Nelson, City Administrator Bob Nelson Jr., Public Works Engineer Terry Bastian, Water Department Forward Sean. How do I pronounce that? Isley. Isley, thank you. Public members present from the Hot Springs Community Garden Group, Carrie Pyle, Darian Guaro, and Girardi, Tom Fisk from the Hot Springs Master Gardeners, Joe Oldman, Catherine Oldman, Keith Raven, and Kevin Mester. The agenda was adopted and published. New business items number one, the Hot Springs Community Garden Board members presented a proposal for creating and establishing a children's community garden in Hot Springs located in the area between the library and the book farm. The members request the city was access and use of the area at no cost to the group, as well as a water source to supply to the boundary of the proposed children's community garden. The committee discussed the request as well as specifics of the proposed proposal presented. The proposal will be reviewed by the library board to determine if there are any conflicting issues and a cost of providing water services location will be determined. If there are no conflicts with the library board and a water line can be provided with minimal and responsible expense to the city, the committee would support a motion to come before the council for approval. Number two, quotes were reviewed for work to be done on behalf of the Water Department for the driveway repairs at 308 Middle Art Drive and stair replacement in water tanks. The stair replacement is a 2024 non-discretionary budgeted expense and the committee supports proceeding. However, the Water Department budget will be reviewed to make sure it can support the work before proceeding. Number three, the city administrator is working on roof damage claims issued regarding the library and clubhouse, roof, clubhouse roofs and the library gutters. Estimates for the library gutter replacement will be sought as replacement for these including the 2023 claim that they have not been replaced. Number four, the Masonic Lodge requested an adjustment to the sewer portion of their bill associated with the January water leak. The water leaked into a dirt floor basement and did not enter the wastewater system. The committee recommends a credit of $203.75 be applied to the account since the excess amount of water that passed through the meter did not enter the wastewater system for processing. Number five, the committee discussed the marking of parking spaces on River Street from Jennings to Albany. The city administrator will generate a plan for review by the committee and seek a contract or quote for comparison with the cost of work or if done in-house. Departmental summaries, code enforcement, code enforcement specialists have been re-engaged and the previous list is being updated. Specific property concerns were discussed along with potential remedies. The water department, 16-inch water line things are no longer needed will be put up for surplus. The 16-inch line in stock will be transferred to General Street for use as culverts. The wastewater department, continued maintenance improvements going on at the facility. The biannual waste treatment facility inspection was completed in mid-March. A weighing report, but no verbal concerns were communicated at the time of inspection. Public works engineer, 
Clubhouse work is progressing well. The AE2S has completed the water system hydraulic study and model updates and the report is expected in mid-April. Since AE2S has completed the study and model update, the next step to update the water plan is to make revisions to the Evans pumping station to allow for required flow tests. Given the current stress on the water department budget, Council will need to thoroughly review the benefits and concerns associated with the timing of this work. Active and inactive project information has been updated and can be found in the Public Works Report on the City website. The meeting is adjourned at 2.27 p.m. The next meeting will be Tuesday, April 30th at 1 here at Miller's Conference. Bill, anything you'd like to add? No additions. Any questions? Further Maybe directed to city administrator also. On those gutters, um, can it be done in house? Does it have to go to bid? <clears throat> or what about those roofing companies coming back and finishing up their mistakes? So the gutters on the library were never replaced as part of the hail claim. So that's why we're obtaining quotes just to get new gutters throughout. So you want to get new gutters, not yes. just put them back up and then nail them off. Okay. All right, that's work. Okay. I have no more questions. Thank you. Well, that's good. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I have a question about the street uh, parking markings. Did you say you were wondering about the city doing that? I thought that was the state's responsibility. No, that's that's our streets on uh, River Street between Jennings yeah. and Albany. Oh. Or Jennings and University and Albany. Thank you. Oh, that one block? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? <coughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Southern Hills Golf Course will meet next Monday at uh, the clubhouse at 5 o'clock. City Administrator Report. Bob, you have anything for us? Uh, the only item I have. Uh, code enforcement nuisance violation warning letters will probably go out by the end of this week, if not the first part of next week. So when you receive phone calls, please direct them to me. That's all I have, sir. Any questions for Bob? Thank you. Misty, finance officer report. Uh, Council, you have your written report. Um, the memo and the financials you're used to seeing. I haven't heard any questions about them. If you had any, I hope that you go ahead and ask them. So I'm not going to go over the numbers and the reports. Um, the deadline for nominating petitions was last week. Four petitions were submitted by the deadline. And based on those submissions, we will not have a 2024 municipal election. Petitions submitted included Mayor Bob Nelson, Ward 1, Larry Pratt, Ward 2, William Lukens, Ward 3, J.R. Huddleston, and in Ward 4, we had no petition filed, so we'll have an opening. Um, I don't believe the school is going to have an election. The Hot Springs School District, nor the Ulrich School District will be having elections. Uh, last day for voter registration. Um, is listed on there and we should still encourage our citizens to vote. So if you have any questions about any of those deadlines, please ask and keep your eye on the newspaper because they do a great job um, reporting on that. Thank you for those of you that attended the annual District 9 meeting. Good meal, good company, nice update, and appreciated going. And our annual drinking water report is now available on our city's website. So if you're interested, take a look. Any questions for Misty? What she had included in her report is, uh, I just have a brief uh, comment for, for Mayor's report. Uh, in Misty's report to Council, her uh, finance officer report, uh, she didn't mention. Uh, she neglected to say anything now, so I want to make sure that uh, I congratulate Misty on her nomination and acceptance of the South Dakota Municipal League District 9 Vice Chair position for a one-year term. That uh, was during the March 27th annual District 9 meeting in Hill City. So congratulations or condolences. Uh, well done.
that's all I have. Uh, unless you have any questions for me. Uh, I did forget to. One thing I'd like to mention, if I could go back to public works related things. Okay. Uh, you saw a notice, we mentioned it last week, but there's been notices went out on the city website as well as I think a month ago on the water bills regarding the lead line survey. I actually did ours. It's very simple. Um, so please, if you haven't done the lead line survey to determine whether or not you have uh, lead pipe servicing uh, your water service into your home, very, very simple to do with your phone or your tablet, whatever. Take a picture of the uh, line coming into your house. Go to the uh, link on the city website. It's about a three-question survey. When was your home built? What's the material of construction? Put your photo here. Survey done. Very, very simple. It's a uh, EPA requirement by, I think, October 16th or something like that. So if you haven't done it, uh, please do that. What about uh, people that rent the landlord? <laughs> uh, it's owner responsibility. <laughs> so you had sent an email that, that I had declined. Did you find anybody? I didn't. So if anyone has not done the survey and would be willing to let us record you and post it on Facebook to show how easy really? it is, um, <laughs> if you're interested in a potential actor or actress serving in that role for the city. And you said you did it, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. but there you walked go. into that. Would, would you be interested? willing to be a, a better council representative than I am? <laughs> better. And <laughs> such a <laughs> Well, I'm through it? Sure. Are <laughs> you taking a picture of it? Our water line coming in. Oh, man. And there's actually almost enough jump away from the meter that you can see the water line. Yeah. Well, it's, e go. it's easy, folks. <laughs> All right. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, okay. Can I get a motion to go into executive session? Make a motion. To go into executive session Second. in accordance with South Dakota codified law 1 25 2 3 legal. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. There will be a pause before we go into executive session.